Welcome to our series, Fine Poetry, Poems That Touch Deeper Chords. Today, James Cousins, Part 5. In his future poetry, Sri Aurobindo has acclaimed Cousins' book, New Ways in English Literature, as, quote, literary criticism which is of the first order, at once discerning and suggestive, criticism which forces us both to see and think, end quote. He has also acknowledged that he learned to intuit deeper, being alerted by Cousins' criticisms of his poems. The mother first met James Cousins in Japan. Later, in 1920, Cousins came to Pondicherry to meet the mother and Sri Aurobindo. The appreciation is palpable in the following citations. Sri Aurobindo writes, It will be more fruitful to take the main substance of the matter for which the body of Mr. Cousins' criticism gives a good material, taking the impression it creates for a starting point and the trend of English poetry for our main text but casting our view farther back into the past, we may try to sound what the future has to give us through the medium of the poetic mind and its power for creation and interpretation. The issues of recent activity are still doubtful, and it would be rash to make any confident prediction. But there is one possibility which this book strongly suggests and which it is at least interesting and may be fruitful to search and consider. That possibility is the discovery of a closer approximation to what we might call the mantra in poetry that rhythmic speech which, as the Veda puts it, rises at once from the heart of the seer and from the distant home of truth. The discovery of the word, the divine movement, the form of thought proper to the reality which, as Mr. Cousins excellently says, quote, lies in the apprehension of a something stable behind the instability of word and deed, something that is reflection of the fundamental passion of humanity for something beyond itself, something that is a dim foreshadowing of the divine urge which is prompting all creation to unfold itself and to rise out of its limitations towards its godlike possibilities." End quote. Poetry in the past has done that in moments of supreme elevation. In the future, there seems to be some chance of its making it a more conscious aim and steadfast endeavor. And this is from the Future Poetry by Sri Arbindo. At a holy well, he dragged his knees from flag to flag and prayed for health with awestruck brow, then hung his ill's discarded rag on the o'erhanging hawthorn bough. And in the adoring hush that fell, I, from the form set inly free, 
knelt at my heart's most holy well and worshipped mine own mystery. Death and Life to the memory of Eveline Nichols. The long, dark slope is topped with mist, but here the sun is on the grass. Beneath the sea waves break and twist, backward like snakes of molten glass. Across an ancient sand-heaped wall, the foot through graves forgotten goes and stops where old, old voices call through generations of repose. But where a sorrow of today has set a freshly fashioned mound, a bird slides down his airy way and makes the silence ring with sound. What gloom might now our spirits balk fades out before that high reproof and through the fabric of your talk go light and shadow, warp and woof. With something deeper than the word, some stately certitude of faith whose eye at life had never blurred nor quivered at the eye of death, but saw in that swift woman's way through changings to the changeless whole and life and death as waves that sway across the ocean of the soul. Three. Then, when the hill was lost in mist, and in the sea the sky was glassed, we wandered home in amethyst, and you upon the morrow passed. On that last journey to the west, whose end was in the Atlantic wave, where on your youth's triumphant crest, one stroke, another's life to save. With glory crowned, your life complete, proud as the horsed and plumed seas that laid your body at my feet. A wonder past Praxiteles. Oh, bear her by the weeping crest And past the fields of fallen ears On her last journey from the west This holy lady day of tears But yet, though heads are bared and bowed and down the road the keeners keen, some spirit music, deep and proud, slips out their thin, shrill cries between, and like the bird that other day, that made the silence ring with sound, it floats along the sunset way, a joy above our sorrow's mound. Five. What grief might now our spirits balk fades out before that high reproof and through the hushed and wavering talk that fills the streets from roof to roof a fire from your high altar shines and kindles through our dusk of strife a faith whose inner eye divines that death is minister to life. 
and all our years a moment's dream in one great mind that grasps the whole. And life and death, but waves that gleam along the ocean of the soul. <laughs>